In today's lesson, I show you how to create a looping background. In my last tutorial, I showed you how to make a walking animation by the request of some of my viewers. And I've also gotten requests for this tutorial as well. And since I have done the walking animation one, I figured this would be the next logical step. So before we begin making our looping background, there are a few things you need to have prepared before we get started. First, um, I have a character set up and you don't necessarily need this for this tutorial, but I thought it would give us a good reference point as to what's going on in the background. And I also have them set up to have a very crude looking walking animation here currently, but it will work for our purposes. And secondly, I have two pieces of environment in the background. First, we have the ground itself, and then we have some hills. And again, very basic, I know, but I'm hoping this will just give you a quick demonstration of how this works. Now, for these environmental pieces, I have done something I will point out. First, you'll notice that the ground is made up of one piece. What I did was after that piece, I repeated the same piece. This will allow us to create the looping animation. I also did the same for the hills. You'll notice that, here I'll hide my character here, you'll notice that this hill is the same as this hill. And of course all the other hills behind it are the same as well. And again, this is for the looping animation process. Now, very simple I have here, but if you wanted to create something complex, like you have your ground, and then you have more variation of the ground throughout, and then you end it with the same piece of ground, that's fine too. Um, you can definitely do that. You can add as much variety as you want, just as long as at the end of all that, you end it the same way as you began. And make sure that it's all uh, the same as far as where it's positioned. So like for instance, you'll notice that this piece is set to this coordinate, while this piece is also set to that coordinate. So that will give you a more seamless transition when you start the looping animation. Now, something else to point out. There are two ways to essentially do this. First, you can do it the way I'm about to show you, and that is to move every individual asset. Or secondly, you can use the camera. Now, I would use the camera. However, there's a problem with that in that once we loop the foreground with the camera, the background will probably not be caught up yet because my background set is set to be more in the background, meaning it's going to move slower. So as we pan the camera, and I can demonstrate that, you'll see that the background is moving slower. So when we get to this point where we need to loop, we're not gonna be able to do it because um, the background hasn't caught up yet. So you could, of course, work with that and extend your ground out and so on. But for this demonstration, we're just gonna use the individual assets. With all that said, let's get started. First thing, let's advance to frame one and position our character in the center. And he will then do the walking animation in a stationary fashion. Next, going back to frame one, I will take the ground and use my translate layer tool and move it so that it's close to the beginning about like that. And my hills are near the beginning, so I don't need to deal with that. But if yours aren't, make sure that they're close to the beginning of your asset. So next, we are just going to move the ground to where the new piece begins. And depending on how fast you want the ground to move is where you'll move it on the timeline. I'll go to about frame 144 six seconds in and then I can just move the assets over like this and now the trick is to line this up so that it's similar or very 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 close if not perfect to how it was set at the first frame so I'll lay this down 
and then zoom in and snap back to frame one. And we can see that there is, of course, some variation there. And we're going to try to want to get it as close as possible. And one thing you can do, too, to help you along with this is you can go back to frame one and look at what your positions are set to for that uh, particular layer. And at least for the Y position, I can copy that, go back to frame 144 and paste that. So that is at least the same. Everything else, you're going to have to kind of eyeball or you can onion skin if you want as well. So with that, I think I have it pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's, it's close. Now, let's do the same with the hills. With the hills, as I kind of talked about before, they're going to move slower. So what we're going to have is more animation for these hills than that of the ground. So going to the hills, let's move these to about frame 240 on our timeline. And again, just like the ground, we're going to move this piece to where the first piece is. So we'll just grab it and move it over. Now, what we need to do, of course, is like we did before, try to position this to where it basically works out to how we can uh, get the Y axis positioned with the first Y axis. So I'll just copy this and then bring it over to the last frame and paste. And now if we try to position this, I can see I still have a little ways to go. So And we're getting pretty close now. Could use a little bit more tweaking. Let's make sure everything is positioned correctly. It needs to come forward just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. So now we have our two layers animated out. The next step is to create the looping animation for each layer. So let's go back to our ground layer, since that's the first one we did. And at the last frame that you animated out, right click and choose cycle. Here you can choose how you want your layer to loop. You can choose absolute, which allows you to dictate exactly which frame you want um, the animation to fall back on once it reaches the last frame of its animation. Or you can choose relative, which allows you to count back how many frames. In this case, we'll choose absolute because we know we want it to go back to frame one once it hits the last frame. You'll notice a change on your timeline. It shows a line going back to your first frame. And if you hit the play button, we have the walking animation going, and once it hits that frame, it continues on. Now there is a slight problem, um, and that is the fact that the ground has an ease motion going on. That's just by default how Anime Studio animates uh, its tweening animations. So we need to adjust that by simply right-clicking on the first frame and choosing linear instead of smooth. This will allow us to just have a straight animation with no easing. If we play it again, we'll see that it continues on and there's no easing occurring. So we now have that taken care of. 
Now we need to do the same with the hills. So I'll click on your hills layer or whatever layer you have for your environment. Go all the way to the last frame, right click on that last frame and choose cycle. We want absolute of a value of one. Go back to frame one of the hills, right click and choose linear. So now we should have all that positioned. And let me just extend my timeline here past 240 since that's my final frame. So we can see the uh, actual looping animation take place. And let's hit play. And we can see now that the ground is about to loop and the hills are about to loop. And they loop just like that. And it'll keep looping and looping and looping until, as you see, it gets to the end of the timeline and then it'll repeat your whole animation anyway. So we now have that positioned. And finally, as you can see, my character stops walking after a certain point. I can, of course, make him an, um, an action. I can go in and make an action for this and loop the action in the actions panel. But for right now, let's just apply the lesson I had showed you here by going to the last frame of our bone animation, right-clicking and choosing Cycle. This time, though, I won't do any of the easing options because I like the way he walks. I like how it's easing in and out. So one more time, I will just play this out. As you can see, the ground loops and the hills loop, and it continues to loop. And that is how you do a looping animation in Anime Studio. Again, you can apply the camera method instead. So instead of looping all of your individual assets, you would just loop the camera movement. However, again, that gets a little bit complicated, especially when you have your background assets, and you would have to move your character along with it and have your character snap back and all that. So I think in the long run, it's just probably easier to move your assets. But again, that's a judgment call you can make depending on how you create your project. But anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you next time.